I am so honored to welcome John Harrington, who received a bachelor degree from our college at the School of Visual Arts. Mr. Harrington is a board certified medical illustrator, of which there are fewer than 200 in this country. He has followed a truly unique path to success, utilizing his art to help better the understanding of juries and patients, lawyers and doctors, the embodiment of a citizen artist. He is the founder and chief mission officer of Advanced Practice Strategies, an organization with close to 100 full-time employees. Mr. Harrington has been a contributing illustrator to a variety of publications, including the New England Journal of Medicine, Boston Globe, and Fortune Magazine. He's a Massachusetts continuing legal education faculty member and a member of the Association of Medical Illustrators, the Massachusetts Association of Trial Attorneys, and the Duxbury Art Association Board. He's a devoted, focused artist, a successful entrepreneur, a trailblazer in the field of medical education through his art, an artist who literally, literally saves hundreds of lives. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce citizens artist and CFA alumnus John Harrington. Dean Juarez, Boston University faculty, distinguished guest, honored alumni, family, friends, and graduates of the class of 2013. Please accept my warmest welcome and deepest thanks for the opportunity to speak on this very special occasion. Many years ago, I sat right where you were sitting today as a graduate of the Boston University School of Visual Arts. I know firsthand what it takes to reach the pinnacle that you have achieved today. If you haven't already done so, I strongly suggest that you take a moment to reflect on this important milestone in your life and think about what brought you to this place. Do you remember that first moment when you knew that a life in arts was inseparable from your very being? That first performance, that first song, or the first piece that you created? Or was it always just an innate sense and a knowledge that you knew that there was no other way for you? I, I certainly can relate myself. Since that time, there have been many auditions, years and years of dedication, recitals, long hours in the studio, the sacrifices that you made to get to where you are today. It is one thing to be blessed with talent, but it is another to, to get where you are today. And you didn't get here without incredibly hard work and dedication. As Emile Zola wrote, the artist is nothing without the gift, but the gift is nothing without work. While there are many graduations happening all over campus this weekend, I would argue that no degree is more competitive or requires more passion, dedication, and sacrifice than the degrees you are earning today. Congratulations on your amazing accomplishment. So over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to tell you about my own journey in art. I'm going to tell you what I do today, my passion and my mission. I'm going to tell you how my friendships and lessons that I learned here while, while I was at BU crafted the person that I am today. And of course, is the obligation of every commencement speaker, I'm going to scatter in some advice along your own journey, and hopefully some of that will connect with you and be valuable. You have been so blessed during your incubation years here, and I can imagine that many of you realize how amazing this environment is. But I promise you, when you get older and you look back, you will fully realize and appreciate the incredible value and, and, and incredible formative and invaluable education you've received here at Boston University. Recently, I had an opportunity to tour the, the campus, and it was inspiring for me to visit the old black box theater, to go back to the music studios, to the sculpture and painting studios. The entire building resonates with creativity. It's, it's omnipresent, it's palpable. And I tell you, when, when you leave here, you'll find it challenging to find places quite like this. There aren't many places on Earth quite like this university, but I strongly encourage you to find them. 
It's, it's crucial for your survival as an artist. I personally have spent a great deal of my career trying to build a creative culture to support innovation, and, and you'll do well to surround yourself with creative people, those who inspire you, those who fill your heart with joy and keep you on your journey and on your mission. It, again, it's a crucial, important piece of advice for you as a survival as an artist. As you leave the university, I do also hope that you work hard to keep the friends that you have made here. Life will take you in all kinds of directions, and it can be challenging to maintain these bonds that you've created here while at the university. I've been fortunate, again, to maintain my friendships with my classmates from those early years, but it wasn't accidental. We made an intentional effort to stay connected, and I suggest you do the same. For us, uh, the, our connection was around the Patriots. We, uh, we purchased season tickets shortly after graduation, and it guaranteed that we would be together at least five or six times a year, no matter what came up. And uh, it's made all the difference in my, my particular journey. I'm sure, just as the same for me, your friends here are, are being incredibly valuable and important for you. My friends are like my own personal historians. They knew me way back when. They keep me honest, and they keep reminding me of my own true north. As for your true north, and, and I think this is a really important notion, as you move forward in your career, it's crucial that you realize that only you can define what success in art is, means to you. It's an absolutely individual experience. It's not your teachers, it's not your parents, not your friends, not your agent. It's only you. You are absolutely unique. You have set out on a goal to reach your own personal North Star, and only you will know when you've attained it. So while you're on your path, do your best to be open to the serendipity of what life may bring you. You may find that your life and ultimate direction in art directs you as much as you direct it, and be open to that possibility. Your satisfaction in life will really come from living an authentic life, your authentic life. I can't stress that enough. For me, in art school, it became pretty clear that I had my own definition of success or what it meant to me. Uh, when I was in art school, we studied the greats like Modigliani and Jericho and Van Gogh and other role models. And as stu students, we romanticized about what it might be like to suffer and struggle for our art like they had. I don't know if you've ever done this, but if you, if you look in one of their biographies, don't skip all the way to the back, because they're usually pretty tragic outcomes. Uh, some of the middle's pretty bad, too. Um, <laughs> so, so and the, the, of course, the same is, is true with music and theater. I have to tell you, as a student, that wasn't entirely inspiring for me. If these idols represented the epitome of success in their artistic expression, I felt a little discouraged. I felt like there had to be a, another way for me, a different path. And so I had, I had to define my own personal way of defining what success in art meant for me. And I believe that's made all the difference in my own career. And I strongly encourage you to think about that and, and really focus on that in your own career. So the best way to tell you about how you use my artistic expression today is to share with you a story from just about a month ago. So I want you to imagine a busy labor and delivery room in California. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, and a team of physicians and nurses are fighting to save the life of a delivering mother and her unborn child. The team is dealing with a birth complication known as shoulder dystocia. In this instance, if the child cannot be delivered effectively through the birth canal, it represents a grave risk to both mother and child. The team is providing the best care possible given their knowledge, judgment, and training. However, they are unable to remedy this complication, and they only have minutes to avoid permanent brain injury and asphyxia and or death. The team is in desperation mode. When the attending physician remembers a new maneuver that she learned a few days earlier in an online continuing medical education course on managing this complication, she quickly performs this procedure called an abdominal rescue and successfully and so safely delivers the baby. Mother and baby are fine. This physician had never performed this procedure in her entire career, nor had anybody, none of her peers or anybody in the hospital. This obstetrician and team in California saved this child's life using training and information that they attained from an online course created by a company right here in Boston, my company, a company that I started nearly 20 years ago after leaving BU. So back when I was sitting where you're sitting today, I could never imagined that someday my illustrations would literally be employed to save lives. And yes, that, that's what I do every single day. 
Today, my company serves thousands of clinicians and hospitals all across the United States. And more importantly, I hear stories like this from clinicians and hospitals every single day about the impact that I've been able to, to create with my own artwork. And again, I'm incredibly blessed to be part of that. Every day in America, hospital, 500 people die from preventable errors. Traditional methods for advancing medicine are highly ineffective, and it takes on average 16 years for new medical advances, like the abdominal rescue that I just spoke about, to become part and adopted on an institution-wide basis. My passion and my mission is to make a difference in this area, and I work with the best and brightest physicians, instructional designers, graphic designers, and medical artists to create new modalities in training that rapidly improves the knowledge and judgment of clinicians in order to create high, reliable, and safer healthcare. The future for my company and me includes the development of mobile applications for the purpose of developing nations and with greater adoption of these best practices in hopes of saving even more lives on a worldwide level. As I said, I've been truly blessed. And although that sounds cliche, I can honestly say that I never had to work a day in my career because I found what I loved and I was able to apply that to my life. You too are incredibly blessed because you already know your passion, you already have found it. Never lose your connection to it. You may not exactly know today where it will take you, but when you have divine, de defined your individual definition of success and you keep your connection to your art, I promise you, contentment will follow you in no matter what iteration takes form. My passion started right here at BU. My professor, Dr. Kramer, who taught anatomy for the artist, first introduced me to the world of medical illustration. I knew that was my vocation. I knew that I, that I had no other path. My BU education has served me extremely well. I think that's for the parents. Nice return on investment there, clearly. Uh, everything I learned in my experience here, composition, design, color theory, et cetera, has been instrumental. I've used it in every single aspect of my career. Uh, a concept that I learned from Mike Monaghan in drawing about working to, from general to specific is a core element of every single thing we do. And, and my company, I could never have believed when I was in art school the things that I was learning were actually apply to my life. And I can, sh I can tell you absolutely they are instrumental and been crucial to my success to this day. In school, being surrounded by incredibly talented artists and musicians and actors instills the importance of giving 100% effort all the time. Although no one ever uh, really instilled that or reflected that more than my wrestling coach, Carl Adams. So I have to, I, I have to give an homage to Carl. Um, those of you who know Carl know that he's a three-time NCAA champion, world-class athlete, and member of three separate Hall of Fames. I was none of the above. However, when, um, whenever you competed against Carl, he always acted like it was the Olympics. He always like, acted like it was the final match of the NCAA tournament. Carl would practice with each of us individually, and in my entire experience, I not, never saw anyone take him down. I remember saying, Coach, you know it's okay. Every now and again, you could let one of us take, take you down. No one in the world of wrestling would ever know. Carl thought about that for a minute. He said, yeah, but I'd know. And, and that made the difference. That's, that interaction stayed with me throughout my career. It's a simple yet effective message. Give your best effort every time, all the time. There are no small performances. How you do one thing is how you do everything. That kind of tenacity is what made Carl the world-class athlete he is, and it's the same virtues that enabled him to build the amazing program and legacy that he created here at, at BU. So I was asking a musician friend for advice on, on this talk today, and he shared a similar experience to, uh, to Carl's, this idea of no small performance or giving 100% all the time. When he first started on his career, he believed that he could focus on his practice and his technical skills, and that would lead him to success. But he learned over time it was really about performing. One night, he happened to be listening to a jazz band that was playing a, a classic standard, you know, a schmaltzy song that you would hear anyone play anytime, anywhere, like the girl from Ipanema. And yet, this night, the pianist just completely crushed his version of the song, and he performed with authenticity and passion. That pianist was Ahmad Jamal. And this experience was an epiphany for my friend. He realized in that moment there were no small performances, no small songs, no small gigs. Just like Carl, the great ones give their best every time. So you never know who might out, be out there in the crowd that evening or who might be, and what it might mean to your career. But more importantly, you will know. Give your best every time, all the time. I'm also here to tell you that 
for me, again, in my own definition of success and, and maybe on the advice front, it's okay to suffer for your art and music and theater, but it's okay to try to find balance. You'd only have this kind of talk at, at an art school <laughs> uh, lecture, but, but you know, it's okay. Don't forget to live your life. Suffer and struggle for your art, yes, but as, as uh, Dean Juarez just said, be a good citizen, be part of the social compact. Don't forget to live your life, to love another, to find joy. You're all incredibly talented, and the world needs you to be part of the community. Creative, talented people like you make the world a better place. So struggle, work hard, create, but get out of the studio once in a while and live your life. Lastly, I encourage you to share shamelessly. And so what does that mean? Well, oftentimes as artists, we get so consumed with the importance of our own work and the, the meaning of what we're creating that we miss out on the opportunity to experiment with other mediums or other applications of our art. I personally have found that doing a variety of creative works has helped me in my own focused work. You've been blessed with an incredibly valuable gift, and I have always believed that it's okay to share your gift to make the world a better place and to make an impact with your life. I have so many of my artist friends who are consumed with that perfect piece or that song or the performance, and they get completely hung up on that. Uh, of course, that's admirable, but it's also important to produce, to give in to the iterative process of art, and to be open to all kinds of expressions of your art. So let me give you an example of a, an application for me, how this occurred in my own life. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to do this small freelance project on the Pocahontas movie that's more than a few years ago. Um, uh, so for me, that was really fun to create these animations and cartoons and draw Pocahontas and John Smith. Um, but I hadn't realized for my parents, that was like the holy grail of artistic endeavor. <laughs> so, so one afternoon, I hear my mother on the phone and she's telling one of her friends about how I was working for Walt Disney. And when she got off the phone, of course, said, Mom, you know, I had to correct her. Like, why didn't you tell them I'm a medical illustrator? It's, you know, incredibly serious and important work. My mother, of course, said, well, I don't know all about that medical illustration stuff. All I know is you work for Walt Disney, and that's what I'm going with. <laughs> so, so when I look back on that, you know, I think, well, you know, I made somebody happy with that. I had, I had joy with that as well, and I made something up. So what could ever be wrong with that? My parents are uh, no longer with us today, but I imagine they'd be very pleased that I had the honor of speaking with you today. I'm fortunate that I had the opportunity to thank them for their commitment to me, and with that in mind, I think now would be a great time for all of us to acknowledge your parents and friends and mentors for the sacrifices they made in reaching. You are going off into a world where there is much work waiting and needing to be done. And here's the good news. You are absolutely positioned to succeed. You have a world-class education. You have tenacity, creativity, intelligence, and soul. Your work ethic alone is a differentiator to just to reach this pinnacle. You have proven that you have what it takes, and I promise you, as somebody who looks at prospects all the time, these are the attributes that the world desires and the world loves the artist. Artists know how to live with passion and strength and conviction. Live in the form of your art because it is resonant and powerful and will make the world a better place. You will make the world a better place. It is incumbent upon you. Today, that is the way of the artist, and today, that is your way. Thank you.